Um, so the, re the relentless nature of having a baby was a real shock to me. Like it's just relentless. Yeah, like yeah. The whole, it's relentless was the word that I kept coming up with. So it was like, um, as a performer, you go, okay, so I've got three months. I've got three months of a show that I'm going to do and I'm exhausted. I'm just so shattered. At the end of that three months, I'm just going to relax yeah. and lie in and not do anything. And then having a baby feels like that. But then you get to the end of the three months and go, oh, there's another 17 and a half years of this. Like, you don't get the, I know. Yeah, there's no... There's no end point for that no. relentlessness. But that's how it feels at the start. And then as you go on, you go, oh, no, it's okay. The, the world comes back into it equilibrium. Does, and yeah. there are people around you and who will support you and you have to ask for mm. help and they will give you the help. You know, yeah. that sort of... When you're in the thick of it, though, it doesn't... Yeah. You think, it's this is actually never going to end. But in, then in hindsight, you go, that went so quickly. Yeah, I should have paid three more months. attention. Yeah. 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 Did you, when you first had Digby, did you feel instantly connected to him? Yeah, I did. I did. The thing that I felt about it was like, um, it was a real, it was a culture shock having mm. a baby. Like, there were so many different things. I have these little clear moments of like, so I'm really into my cats, right? So I have... Yes, I, I know you Yeah, are. totally cat lady. <laughs> so... I'm not going to judge you on it. A little bit judge you on it, but not too so much. So I have this clear memory of coming home, sitting on the couch for Digby, and one of my cats walking across the floor, and me going, oh, it's a cat. Like, just going, oh, you have clunked down the pecking order. I so because you were so into them. Yeah, yeah, and then just going, oh, I've totally anthropomorphised you. are just a cat. Get away <laughs> from the baby. Just, and then, but then at the same time, sitting in the living room, a couple of days later, going, oh, why is the cat making that weird noise? It's making, oh, shit, it's a baby. Wow. Like, um, yeah. But the thing, the thing about having a baby is that, for me anyway, was that... And, Every other aspect of my life, I pretty much know what I'm doing. Like, I pretty yeah. much, you know, I know how to do comedy. I know how to write. I know I've been doing these things for a while. I'm doing them really well. And then you put in charge of this thing that you have no, yeah. had no experience of. It's like going into a company and rather, being, rather than being allowed to be the receptionist for a while and working your way out into the company, they just make you the CEO and they go, you're in charge of the company. Yeah, keep this thing alive. Yeah. Good luck. Oh, shit. Yeah. Just, yeah. And I, because I, didn't you feel like a hero? I felt like a fucking hero after I gave birth. And I'm like, but every woman pretty much does it. Like all yeah. their mums did it. But you feel like you're the only person on the planet that can do something so amazing. I felt really proud of my body. Like I felt really mm. amazed that my yeah. body had done this thing. Um, I think this is not quite the question that you asked. The thing I found really interesting was I ended up having a Caesar with Digby. Right. And it was a really positive experience. And I really, I loved my midwives. I loved my obstetrician. I loved the other people that, that were there in the room. And it was great that he was a Caesar because he had the cord around his neck when he came out. So it was right. a perfect way for him to arrive. Did you know that beforehand? No, but I had a paranoia about it because friends had lost a baby through right. having caught. So it was this, this was my paranoia. And so when we had the Caesar, he wasn't shifting. He was quite a big baby. Um, so got to experience labour, then had the Caesar, he came out, they had caught around his neck, so they got that off, so that was fine, so it was the perfect way for him to arrive. Um, and it was a really great positive birth experience, and yeah. lots of women afterwards wanted me to rewrite it as a bad experience. Really? Yeah, it was really interesting. So lots of people were going, oh, that must have been so upsetting for you that you ended up with the Caesar. And I'd be like, no, it was great. It was yeah. totally the right thing that happened. And I found that, I found that really interesting that it was quite a common response would be, oh, that must have been upsetting. And I was like, no, and it was really, yeah. it was great, and I don't want to rewrite it. I think we get hooked into, as women, I think we get hooked into having to hold birth up as like our rite of passage. When mm. it is, it's a rite of passage, but it doesn't define you, and it shouldn't be, it shouldn't have to be seen as a traumatic thing that we survived. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, totally. Like, it's one thing that you've done, and it's an amazing thing that you've done, but yeah. you do other amazing things, yeah. and it shouldn't have to be this thing that was so traumatic and dreadful and, and how awful and I'm going to scare you with my story yeah. because I so many scary yeah, yeah. birth stories out yeah. there but do you did you find because you had a c-section women who had vaginal birth were pity like were, were they the ones saying oh I guess oh, so it was thing. all people going oh you poor thing but it's just like no that's just the way that he needed to and come thank god and we I, have the, have that available and, to yeah, us yeah and and all that matters at the end is that we both made it, you yes. know, like we both survived that and that's magnificent. And however he had to arrive, that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, when I first saw Bax, I, he felt like a complete stranger wow. to me. Complete stranger. And I, it took wow. me, it took me about 24 hours before I'm like, yeah, this is, I love this little thing. Yeah. But it took me until his first smile to I'm like, 
I was in love with him and that wow. was 10 weeks. Because I remember a friend saying that after she had her first son that, that they went to put him on her and she just went, get him away from me. Wow, and she just yeah. had to absorb what had happened like because she found it difficult and it was sort of a shock to her. So she just needed to be alone for like 20 yeah. minutes and then she could look Which at I him. Which I completely get yeah, that. Yeah. I was so... I went into shock after I had him that yeah. I, they're like, he put him on your chest and I'm like, I can't, I couldn't even hold him. Like it was, yeah. and I'm so glad that, you know, that those feelings come because you don't know what you're meant to feel. You hear, oh, I instantly fell in love with yeah, him yeah. or I didn't. And it's like, you just feel what you feel. And yeah. you and were going, as a mother, you were going to love your kid, whether it kicks in yeah, at whatever yeah. time. And, the, and, and you give yourself so much shit over, oh, that didn't go the way it was supposed to go yeah. or that's not how it's supposed to happen or yeah or whatever and i reckon we spend so much time feeling guilty about stuff that actually doesn't matter like no not at all you know it, you know I got, I got so hung up on not being able to um breastfeed very well you know yeah. and, and oh my god i've got to supplement with formula breastfeeding <laughs> is the fucking hardest thing yeah. in the world to yeah. do i got mastitis five times and people are like why did you keep feeding i'm like because i had to get rid of it somehow yeah, so then yeah. when he cleared it i'm like well i might as well keep going yeah. But it's such an alien thing, but the most natural thing ever. Yeah. And then, and it's just, it's crazy and there's so much pressure on there's the people that want you to breastfeed, the people are like, why are you bothering? And yeah. it's just, like, and I went back to work at eight, when he was eight weeks old, because I was mm. finishing my contract at the radio station. I was like, well, I need to get as much of that money as I can before, yeah. I, before I come to the end of work. And so I would get up in the morning and express milk and then go off to the radio station and beautiful Dylan Lewis, mm would sit there while we were playing music and I would use my breast pump while the songs were playing and then turn it off and then we'd have our talk mm. break and then turn it back on and stuff. And that breast milk became the most liquid gold. valuable thing in yes. the universe. And I was yes. driving home after one shift, because Chris would be at home feeding Debbie with the express milk. I'm driving home after this shift and Chris rings up going, something terrible's happened. And oh. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I called over and I was like, what, is he all right? And he's like, he's fine, but I'm really sorry. I knocked a bottle of breast milk oh. over. And we both cried. We literally cried over spilt milk. I would have too. I would have like, too. That is, but what, that was an hour's worth of... It's so much work. Or in the hospital when you first, that weird coloured stuff that comes yeah. out at the beginning and back's attached wrong to start with so I couldn't feed him properly and I'm expressing and the teeniest bit came out and Sam knocked it and I was like, oh. <laughs> I have, I actually have feelings of hate right now. Like this is so, I'm so, because it, it's so much work oh. to get this teensy bit and I remember the nurse go, good job and it'd feel like half a yeah, teaspoon yeah. and be like, oh my God, yeah. is this seriously what this yeah. is? And the other thing that no one told me, the best thing we ever did, the best thing we ever did was get a lactation consultant they, yeah. and they totally saved, saved my life because we had trouble with breastfeeding. Book it in as soon as you, oh, the day you get out of yeah, the hospital, yeah. that's and my advice. And they were advice. just be beautiful women, you yeah. know, digby poodle down one of their legs and they were like, well, oh, it happens all the time, but that's why I wear black pants, like they're totally, just yeah. totally cool with everything. But um, no one warned me that they said your boobs will get bigger, but they didn't tell me they'd be different sizes. Oh, one so, of different sizes? <laughs> I had the uber boob and then just a bottle top. Like it was... Oh, like it cause, was yeah, because they'll feed more out of one. Mine well, no, ended up just, like that towards the yeah, end. Yeah, no, they just did it themselves. One of them just got bigger, but the other one got enormous. And then yeah. so I was doing some TV and so we would spend ages padding up one side so I just wasn't this massive lopsided creature. I was like, so nobody warned me. I know there's so many things yeah. that you can't know until it's yeah. happening. But then it's like, my analogy is always, when you go travelling, people go watch out Europe's expensive and you yeah. go oh yeah, yeah Europe's expensive and then you get to Europe and you go oh my god Europe is so expensive yeah, oh my yeah. god you just until it happens like you can intellectually understand what it's going to be like but then until it happens you just don't know you what can't. it feels like and you like. can't know how can you you spoke about guilt and you've done a whole show on guilt yeah, yeah. things of feeling guilty your whole life you grew up feeling yeah, guilty yeah. didn't you I think it's a religion you know religious yeah. stuff yeah mother's guilt is something that yeah is in all of us and I didn't feel it for the first year of Baxter's life because I was with him so much yeah. and now I have guilt that I'm not with him as much. Yeah. I also have guilt that I don't want to be with him. Oh yeah, all the that's time. a terrible thing. And it's that's such a hard. stupid thing. Yeah. That you go, oh, how nice to be sitting on a couch with Monty talking about babies and we don't have to go, Digby, can you not do that please? Can you yeah. put it down? Can, you know that, that you're just allowed to have a conversation that finishes. Yeah. And that yeah. you're allowed to enjoy being on your own and it doesn't make you a bad mum. It no. just makes you still the person you were, but now you hang out with this tiny drunk person all yeah. the time. Do you have that though? Do you go sometimes, yeah, I just I do. don't want to be around him? I don't. Oh, so I 
think, oh no you I, don't no, see no, i sound no, fucking no. bad mum I, I remember i have a lot <laughs> i remember chris saying to my brother i can't imagine ever being angry with this baby and my brother just laughing and yeah. then going all oh, right because oh, it can be annoying sometimes yeah. you know and sometimes yeah i think the police should use small children for interrogations because a small child can ask the same question 400 times and you yeah. can give them the answer 400 times and they're still not satisfied. Like at times like that, I go, it's just nice to be. Yeah. Oh, like, you know, it's nice to sit down and read a book. Yes. And, and there's nothing, I love him more than anything in the world that goes without saying, but sometimes I'm like, I don't really even have anything on today, but I need a day to myself yeah. to do nothing, to go and do my jobs, to do nothing. and. But because I do feel like I need them quite a lot, sometimes I feel guilty and I'm like, this is mother's guilt. You cannot yeah. escape it. And talking to my husband and friends of ours, I was talking to the mum of the other family and we were both saying how guilty we feel about stuff like wanting a day to ourselves or whatever. And both dads were going, we just don't feel that. Mm. We just don't feel that at all. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm, I'm lucky in that I, I get to do lots of work where I go away for like overnight or something like that. And I get time by myself. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's in a hotel room before a gig or after a gig or whatever or even on the plane I put I, the best present my husband ever gave me was a pair of noise cancelling headphones yeah I just put them on the plane I don't even put music on I just turn, <laughs> turn, yes, turn the noises off and just sit there and, and read or write or whatever mm. and I'm lucky that I get those moments, moments. to be alone totally. yeah the one thing I didn't expect about having a baby was how fierce I would feel about him you know mm. like how protective I would feel of him and I have this really clear memory of we were at Heels All Sanctuary with my family and he was about two months old and he was in the pram and we went through this part where the emus and the wallabies were and this yeah. emu started to come towards us and I have this really vivid memory of looking at it and going if you come any closer I will fuck you up like, just, <laughs> <laughs> as, if, as if I'm going to take on an emu and snap its neck like <laughs> did like, you say it to no, the emu or like, in my head in my head I was like I will fuck you up <laughs> like I was so because my son was like this is a massive bird near my baby. Like, and I was totally, I just had this certainty that I would, I would fight I to the death for that little blob Isn't and that Isn't amazing? Pram. Yeah. And your husband had it too when you were in an earthquake. Yeah, yeah. In Christchurch, nearly pushed your cousin through the wall to get to your son. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were in a, uh, an earthquake in Christchurch and Digby was asleep in the porter cot and he ran, he was trying to run down the hall to get to Digby and he couldn't get down the hall fast enough because of the shaking. But when he came back with Digby, my 19-year-old niece went, you realise that you pushed me? out of the way yeah. to get to him and he's like I had no memory of you just like you just get yeah. you just yeah. do whatever you have to do and I did it the other day I I we'd taken Digby to a school fair or something and he had this butterfly painted on his face beautiful butterfly and he was so thrilled with it he's four he was so thrilled with it and and it was um he was just delighted with his butterfly mm. and then we went to this playground and this little boy started mocking him for having a girl's face mm. and was like yelling at him and mocking him and I and Digby came over to me and he said, he said, I've got a funny face. And I was so angry. I've never done this before. I part to an emu. Uh, <laughs> I, I went over to this little kid and I went, you don't make fun of other people. He's allowed, and like really told him off. I was so angry that he'd destroyed Digby's excitement and joy, this little innocent joy in his I face. Know. I was so angry. So I told this little kid off and then marched away with Digby. And then his mother came and told him off as well. Right. And I was like, great, she's told him off. And then she spanked him. And I was like, no, oh, that's not so oh, good. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not right. <laughs> but isn't it, because you remember back when you were little and you, things like that stick in your head oh. and it takes away a bit and of your really innocence. And it really strips him. away yeah. your confidence. I yeah, know. and he kept referring to it for the rest of the day. He said, I oh. had a funny face. And I was like, you've got a beautiful face and it's great. And I was so angry that like, oh, he's only four and already he's getting the whole thing that you can't have a, you can't do anything with it's beautiful, you've got to be rough and tough and... I know. I and like, what about Ugh. when they go to school though and you're not oh. there to... Uh, yeah. I'm not going, I'm going to lock him away and just... <laughs> he can teach himself to read and French and stuff like that. As long as he doesn't get teased, I don't care if he grows oh. up a freak of just... Right, there's so many times to have your heart broken on their oh. behalf. Oh my God. Yeah. Growing up, because you have done a show on yeah. guilt, and you have said you just used to feel guilty about guilty. Everything. 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 Like if the teacher said someone stolen my ruler, I'd be like, oh my god. <laughs> Even though it wasn't me, I'd be like, oh. or you know, like oh, I'm gonna own up, oh. just because I couldn't stand the stress of there being something bad that had happened. But we, we used to go to this, um, this wildlife park in Christchurch called Willowbank, and we loved it. And this haunted me for so many years. My older brothers were um, tormenting a Canadian goose, mm. so which is 
like geese are assholes anyway. Yeah. But so it's, they, they were pretending to feed it and then taking the food away and pretending to feed it and taking the food kind away and stuff. It's getting yeah. kind of funny. And I was about four and the goose was just getting really pissed off with the fact that they weren't actually giving it any food and it just became enraged and it turned around and attacked a stranger. Oh. So it just bit this woman who was walking past, it bit her on the ass, and then chased her off down the pathway and she was screaming and was honking <laughs> and chasing her off down the pathway. And I felt so bad about that for so long. I was like, okay, so we've killed a woman. Like the, oh, the, I was convinced I was convinced that the goose oh, would yeah, probably kill her. Seeing a goose chase a yeah, woman. Yeah, it's gonna down eat her. It's gonna eat her. They love meat. Um, so I was convinced that they were um, it was either gonna kill her or that the next time we came back to Willowbank the goose would remember us. Oh and that, yeah, that yeah. it would follow us around and probably kill us. Yeah. Quite apart from the fact that I hadn't even touched the goose or the food or anything like that, but just the fact that I was related yes. to my brothers. And I felt terrible about that for years. I wonder if that was the moment that then carried you Maybe. Because you was a really you were good growing up, weren't oh, yeah, you? Yeah, I was you were always, really well always concerned about being good and, and doing the right thing and you know, I was a prefect at school and yeah, all right. that, you know, get good marks and just always obsessed with doing the right thing. Did you do anything bad? Like, were your parents just like, well, you've got a saint here. She is so oh, good. I'm sure they didn't think that. that. Did you give them any problems? Oh, when I was a, when I was a teenager, like when I, when I wanted to go out, like I, I, um, the two things that I feel the most guilty about, I made my mother throw up. What? I got just so upset that she vomited. Okay, like, that's bad. That's yeah, not yeah. a good girl so, thing to do. So, um, How, why, what did you do? <laughs> so we, so I'd said to my mum, Mum, would you want to know if I went on the pill? And my mum said, I would love that you felt that you could trust me and that you were mature enough to be looking after yourself and I would really appreciate that. So a couple of months later, I went back to her and I, I went, Mum, I'm going on the pill. And she's like, no, it's not! And I like, totally lost her mind. And I was like, but you, and she said, how can I trust you? And I was like, but you told me that you wanted to know the mm. truth. And she's like, yeah, but that was a hypothetical situation. And, and so um, she was really upset that I was um, obviously going to become sexually active. Yeah, with, right. With the... Um, the guy who was like, right, you'll do. Yes, um, yes. And, and so and, she vomited. No, 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 this is it. So, so, oh. so the school formal was coming up and I wanted to stay out all night. And because she knew that we were sleeping together, she was, <gasps> oh. because, and because parents know that sex only takes place after midnight outside the city limits, yeah, right. she knew that, um, that there would be sex taking place if I stayed out all night, quite unaware of how much sex was taking place at her house already. <laughs> um, and so I would come home after school and we would fight about whether or not I could stay out all night or not and then we got to the point where I was just screaming at her one afternoon, just screaming hysterical and she was so upset that she threw up oh. and it was, it was awful and I felt terrible, it would be terrible, so terrible, awful. just terrible, you're not oh, supposed you to do felt, that to your mother. No, you feel guilty again oh, for, oh. Do you, what do you think about being best friends with your mum though, because kids in high school, I'm so close to my mum, like yeah. almost unhealthily close, like we speak a huge amount, but there's still things I wouldn't talk to oh, mum about. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There'd be some girls in school who would say, I've had sex with this person, that person. I'm like, that's your mum. Yeah, I would hope that like when Digby gets older that we'd be able to have conversations. Not, I don't want details, but just to know where he's at and you know, that he's looking after himself and he's being respectful yeah. of his partner and all that, you know, all of that stuff. But like my mum, I'm really good friends with my mum now, but like you say, there are things that we wouldn't discuss. Oh. But, but for a long time there was, um, you know, as a teenager, couldn't understand people that were friends with their mums at all. And it's really only, I would say, in my 30s that, that we became really close. Yeah. And when my parents came to stay with me after Digby was born, um, I remember saying to my mum, I would just burst into tears and went, I'm so sorry, I had no idea how much you loved me. Because mm. I'd suddenly understood after he was born, like, you the rationale. It's like, no. yeah, okay, I get that you know, you were overprotective because you just loved me so much yeah. and you made those decisions because you just loved me. And you know, the staying out all night after the formal because you just totally. loved me, you know, and, and still go, you were a bit overprotective, but yeah, but, but get, getting that it came from a place of love as opposed yeah. to, I, I just want you not to enjoy your life, which at the time is what I you totally, what totally you interpret it yeah. as. Yeah. Do you reckon if Digby was a girl though, when he's growing up, would you want to hear yeah, totally. Because I would I want my know, I I know. Know because I want my I would want my daughter to be completely informed to know that her sexuality is for her enjoyment, that she's not there for someone else to have sex with, that she has sex with someone else. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because like, because my big thing yeah. is that we this is my phrase that I always say we teach our daughters we need to teach our daughters to be rock stars, not fuck rock stars. Mm. So I would want my daughter to grow up knowing that she's the person that's the most important, yeah. you know, and, and it's about what she's comfortable with and about what she wants to do and that she's not just there for someone else's 
yeah. enjoyment that she should be enjoying her sexuality. Totally. If I have a girl or even Vax, can I just send them to you and you give them that chance? Yeah, sure. You worded that really well too. <laughs> just don't say the F word okay. and then that's all good. Yeah. You have quite a different setup than a traditional setup. Yeah. Your husband is the stay at home yeah. dad more so. Yeah. How does that work? So obviously you bring in most of the money into yeah, your family. Yeah, he works as well part time. Um, but yeah, I'm the I would earn more than he does. Does that has that ever been an issue in your family? No, he's great. He's amazing because he he just always goes. But we're a team, and yeah, you know, this is for us. And so he's never he's quite a rare guy, I reckon, in that there's no ego about me being the breadwinner, and there's no yeah. ego about like he loves watching me succeed, which yeah. I love so much because in the past I haven't had that. I've had, you know, resentment and things like that from other partners nice. and jealousy. And it's so great to just go, well, yeah, we are a team and everything I do is for the three of us mm. and, and everything he does is for the three of us. And it's... Do you ever sometimes feel the pressure? Of yeah, totally, all the time. Absolutely all the time. And so how do you handle that going, okay, if I don't want to go and do this gig tonight, then oh, you I just don't go, I choice. No, I just do it. I do it because I go, well, I'm earning money to to house us and to, you know, let us have holidays and, and do that kind of thing and to give Digby a great life. Yeah, right. And so, you know, like we've talked about maybe going and working in England for a while, but part of part of my feelings about that are that I want Digby to have the same quality of life there as he would have here. And I don't know whether we could go to that. Yeah, right, sort of, right, right. Yeah, so I do feel the pressure, but like I say, I guess I'm fortunate and I can, I can keep making my own work. I just have yeah. to keep doing it. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I love it when it is different like that. You just realise how every relationship is so different. It yeah. just works, because what works for you guys mightn't work yeah. for somebody else. A man could feel really threatened by that. Mm. or Because I sometimes think if, I, if it was all on me to bring in the money, I don't know how I would feel about that. Yeah. I don't know how I would handle it. And I always independently, financially like to stand on my own two yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah. But if it was all on my shoulders, I don't know if I'd be as Yeah, I, mean, I, th it. Think, I think what I feel is that, because Chris, Chris is a primary school teacher, mm -hmm. so there'll always be work for him as a primary school teacher. He works in IT at the moment. Right. If, if everything came to a stop for me tomorrow, he would be able to support us. Right. So, yeah. and together we can support the family well so yeah. maybe knowing that is yeah, and handy too I mean yeah. he struggles he's way more relaxed about it now but when we were together in the early years he really struggles with the the completely nebulous nature of my profession of yeah. that you know that you can have no work for six months and then suddenly you've just earned all your money for the year yeah. you know like that crazy yeah. sort of just and you don't you know and I can look at the calendar and go okay I've got nothing I've got nothing after January and then by December they'll, I'll be booked up till August, you know, that yeah. sort of crazy. Yeah, because if you're not in that, you'd go, he would go that uncertainty. Yeah, totally, because he's yeah. always worked in, you know, you go to school five days a week, you teach, you know, that's your yeah. regular thing, or, you know, he's a, um, a project manager in IT, so you've got your hours and you yeah, work with you just do work. sensible people. Yeah. <laughs> you've worked with a lot of, you know, in teams with men and with a lot of men. How do you, do you prefer to work with men or do you work better with women? Um, I like working with both. The profession that I'm in is predominantly male, mm -hmm. and it's always been that way. Like yeah. the the work that I've done has always been with other men. I think I'm equipped to do it because I was that um, stroppy little sister. Yeah. So I kind of go, okay, I know how to I know how to deal with groups of men. Yeah. I love it when there are other women around. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I do a lot of panel shows. Like I've done, where I've done a lot of panel shows, and there's usually like two women and four guys or yep, something like that. Always. Um, and there's a show that I do in New Zealand, which I really love doing, but often, most of the time, I'll be the only woman on that mm. panel. And there's just not the opportunity for the banter or the no. shared experience. And I can't banter about the same things that the guys do because I'm not a guy. No. You know, like, it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it can be hard sometimes. In, you know, in every industry, generalising, but mainly men are paid more than women still. Is it like that in the comedy world? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know, uh, because people get paid different things. Like, you, you know, and a lot of stuff I do is on my own as well. So it's yeah. not even just working with men, it's often just being alone. So, um, so corporate events or whatever, that's me on my own doing yeah. my own thing. Or on the bill, you d no, you don't get paid less if you're a woman. It'll be like you get mm. 200 bucks for 
for the headlining spot or you get $50 for a 10-minute spot or whatever whatever you get, that's the flat rate. You don't get paid less because you're a woman. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that's good. Because, mm. you know, in CEO roles, there's still the yeah, yeah. division of women yeah. and men's pays. Yeah. And in most, I know when, whenever I've done things, the men have always been paid more than, right. than I have. So it's interesting to know... I mean, there may be less. There may be less room for women. Like, there may be, you know, if you've got a, a stand-up bill, and there's one woman on it, that role's filled. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. That sort of that happens. Yeah. It's exhausting, isn't it? Though, when you think of that, like, and also I should say, with the men that I've worked with, with have always had more experience than me. But I also know I uh, I might be paid a little bit more if I wasn't. Yeah, female. I think. I mean, I think there's definite there's inequality mm. in the best way I find to deal with it is just to keep going because yeah. I go there's been times where I've gone oh it's just really hard and maybe I don't want to do this anymore and I think no but if there's if there's younger women coming up I want them to know to not be the only person backstage not yeah. be the only woman yeah. backstage and um and just yeah it's such you know I don't I don't I never I hate getting into why aren't women funny I hate all of that it's just mm. a stupid question um, I think that what you just said though is so beautiful how you said I don't want the younger women coming up to be the only women backstage because yeah. you could go these are young women coming up I'm threat I could be threatened think, by them I think we, we're taught that that's the way we're supposed to feel about other women like people will always go oh women are so competitive and they they, yeah. they feel threatened but that's it's like um, oh, have I, I need to think about this before I say it out loud um, it's like coming from a position of going, there is a only room for one woman. Mm. So if that woman's getting that job, I can't get that job, as opposed to going, well, there's room for all there of us. Is, yeah. There's room for all of us. Yeah. And if I make it easier for this next person to come up, then then people will see that it works to have women and there'll be yeah. more opportunities the for women. The more of us that there yeah, are, yeah. Like the coming, more jobs will yeah, come. Yeah, coming, coming yeah. from a, um, an attitude of there being plenty rather than there being yeah. only a tiny space for us all. I also think that comes with being really secure in yourself and being yeah. sure of yourself because yeah. at the beginning when I was doing things I'd be like shit there's no room for me you know yeah. whereas I've gone along I've taken on that there's room for everyone yeah we can like, all be here and we should all be here yeah. and we should help each other yeah absolutely in, in every thing yeah and and that you go okay so it's not working for me during doing it a traditional way so I'll do something different I'll make I'll make something different you know like yeah. it's great your website that you're interviewing really fantastic interesting women and yeah, yeah. like that's a really lovely resource to have to just go oh wow you, like I would love it to get to the point where you go and see a comedy show you see something and then at the end of it you go oh hey they were all chicks yeah you know like as opposed like to Beyonce's band your husband Chris said no <laughs> all women I go to her concert I'm like there's no men here these are all women just rocking out yeah. and it's interesting you like like Stand-up nights, um, like they'll go, oh, we'll have an all-female bill. But I reckon it's far better to just book all, all women and just not say anything about it. Exactly, not just say, don't, it doesn't, yeah. Yeah, these are the comedians tonight, not yeah. these are, here's tonight and it's all female. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. go, well, you just see some comedy and you'll love it and at the end of it you go, oh, yeah, hang on. Yes, yeah. yes, I totally It's changing, agree. I think it is changing. Slowly, yeah, mm. it is. The couch, we asked yep. show and tell. Yep. What have you bought today? Um, I have bought a ring. <laughs> Um, I know that Kia Hooper bought a ring as well. For yeah, me. but this we is love from a, rings. This is my great grandmother's ring, and she got it when she was forty, and then she gave it to my grandmother when my grandmother was forty, and my oh. mother got it when she was forty, and she's given it to me. She gave it to wow. me when I was On your forty. 40 yeah. yeah, and it will go to my niece when she is forty. How cool is that? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a garnet ring, and my great grandmother was a really interesting person and my grandmother was a great woman and my mum is lovely and so I really love that. You've all had it. Yeah, we've all had it. All these yeah. interesting women that, that have done wonderful things and, and meant so much to people. Yeah, I love to be part of that that chain. And on your 40, how, do you, how did you feel about turning 40? Because some people are really funny about it and others, it's just a number. I had a bit of angst about it, I think. I, yeah. I, because I think I was going, oh, you know, oh, woman in the media, you know, once you've once you're past 25 and you're not dating a footballer, like, where's yeah. there room for you kind of um, thing. So I had a little bit of that, but now I like it because I just go, well, I'm happier than I've ever been. I, I feel comfortable with who I am. I love having had life experience. I love that I'm not going through early 20s angst. Yeah. I love that I've got a, a great partner and my son and, you know, and, and I, I love the lives that my friends have and, you yeah. know, I feel like... 
you wouldn't have that if you weren't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like all the things, all the things that I've done have brought me here, and and I, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been who I am without any of those things, and it's taken that long to get here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, and and we're worth more than our age. So totally. Yeah. So totally. Yeah.